I'm ready to fight. So nice having all of these hearty folk in our home. Oh, no drink in your fist? Come on, I'll find you something. So this is it, the big one, the first head-to-head -head of our next generation consoles. Who's going to come out on top in this almighty battle of next generation 4K monsters, SSD speeds, and all that pizzazz? Well, the first title is nothing other than a perfect cross-generation title. The new black flag, so to speak, as I'm calling it, as AC Valhalla. It's a typical Ubisoft title. It's a typical um, Assassin's Creed game. It's fun. It's expansive, it has a story, it doesn't take itself too seriously, and it certainly isn't historically accurate. But all of that doesn't matter, it never is, it never has been, that's not the point. The point is, enjoyable, fun gameplay, and Assassin's Creed always ticks that box, even if it is getting a bit repetitive at times. This doesn't seem to be a massive shake-up on the formula. It follows very similar to Odyssey, very similar to Black Flag, in fact, and that combination thereof of you going around, exploring the world, learning your path throughout it. You can choose between a woman, a man, or just choose the middle of the road and then flip-flop between different stories. I haven't tried that yet. I'm not too sure how that's going to work out in terms of a story progression piece, but hey, it's an option. It's great that it's there. And it is fun, I must admit, I always enjoy getting into Assassin's Creed titles and seeing where the story goes, the world, and the beauty it has to offer. Obviously, starting off up north with the green lights and enjoying, well, the northern lights, and enjoying the, the northern hemisphere and the winter, and then moving into England. I will be back with a full in-depth analysis of all versions, including the PS4, right down to the Xbox One, so we'll see how, how low this can go. But here, I'm only looking at the top end of the console space. That's right the PlayStation Vive versus the Series X. So, what are we looking at? Well, the very first for Assassin's Creed titles on consoles, well, at least unless you take the things like Assassin's Creed Unity, which I recently covered in my backwards compatibility on PS5, it now runs at 60 FPS out of the box. You heard me right. 60 FPS for an Assassin's Creed title on brand spanking new consoles, all running at a native 4K. So, all good so far. 60 FPS, 4K, all down to the fact that these P these CPUs are in the consoles, the Zen 2 CPUs are significantly more powerful, and it means that 60 FPS is a genuine option so long as you're not GPU limited. Now, many of the titles in that generation, including this, currently running on PS5, sorry, PS4 Pro or Xbox One X, all run at 30 FPS. Even the Series S runs at 30 FPS. Which, in my mind, is a crazy decision because running at 1080p would be better at 60fps, which it could with the CPU, and it runs a dynamic solution at 1440p. So there you go, just like these do. Spoiler alert there. So what do we have? Well, we have 30fps on the older consoles. You can see here on the PS4 Pro. It leaps up to 60fps, and the performance is very impressive. I'm actually really impressed with how consistent it is. So... Let's get into the comparisons, let's get into the data that you all want to see, that's why you've come here. So, the first thing is, both versions target 60fps, and both versions don't hold a locked 60fps. But do you know what? In these early sections I've tested here, they are almost perfectly locked. There's not a lot in it at all. The only difference here is the Series X does run an adaptive V-Sync, so it does tear when it dips, which gives it a little bit of leeway so it can actually tear a little more often and therefore try and hold on to that frame rate and there's a couple of bits in this demo here where it well, the first part of the game where you can see where it does tear very very occasionally the ps4 it, ps5 is fully v-synced i'm going to say ps4 and pro it's going to happen so just get used to the fact that sometimes i'm going to say that wrong in these early parts of these comparisons while i get used to saying it so many consoles nowadays but it's going to run almost 60 fps so the ps5 is pretty much a lot 60 but it does skip into the 33 millisecond point when it does have to drop a frame it doesn't tear at all no tearing much better that said the series x doesn't tear that much at all so it's hardly that bad in these early sections it might be worse later on in the game i will come back to that when i've got a full analysis and give you a full depth and stress test in terms of how the title runs but right now you can see the performance you can see the consistency and you can see my average rate frame rate at the bottom shows how close they are and in fact at the end of the demo across identical runs here they are 0.1 of a frame per second out zero absolutely nothing there's nothing in it at all they are pretty much identical in terms of performance metrics so the next comparison is down to resolution 
Now both consoles have HDR embedded, designed, everything's HDR, even to the point where it'll just plug in, run on a HDR TV, and even if it's an SDR output, it'll tone map it back to a HDR display, so you haven't got to mess around with your TV anymore. Unfortunately, I'm SDRing it here because I'm still working on solutions on that, but they look superb on a 4K screen. They look sharp, crisp, and HDR is incredible. Lots of bright colours, lots of sharp, sharp contrast in the game. It is always a stunning looking game. Artistically, it's a great part of the world. It's got great colours, great tones, and it uses it brilliantly. Some of the latest sections in the game I've just got to recently, I haven't recorded them yet, are uh, really good. England looks beautiful. Um, but the resolution is dynamic on both consoles. So they both target 3840 by 2160, as you would imagine. Um, but they both dynamically scale. And from my count so far, they rarely hold 3840 by 2160. In fact, more often than not, there are between 1620 and 1800p. And I have seen the Series X drop as low as 2560 by 1440. I haven't seen the, the PS4 go that low. PS5, I've seen it go to 1620. It, it will go to 1440p. That's probably the lower bounds limit. I wouldn't be amazed if they don't actually go right down to 1080p if they could, if it's really stressful. I don't know. As low as I've counted so far, 2560 by 1440 on the X and 2880 by 1620 on the PS5. But I'm going to go all out and say they both scale the same range. And then on top of this, there is the, the caveat that they likely use a reconstruction method because Ubisoft have been using that since forever now um, on all Assassin's Creed titles. So it likely gets to that output resolution by using a reconstruction method to get back to 3840 by 2160 and what we might be seeing is a breakdown in that reconstruction level right down to half width um that's likely what it's doing it's probably a native height as it used to be as i covered back with um assassin's creed syndicate when they brought that in on the pro so that was 1440 by 1620 and that was reconstructed back to 2880 this is likely probably the same it's probably going to be a, a dynamic half width and then a full height and that's what you get so visual quality is sharp crisp it's the best looking sharpest looking console version of assassin's creed i've yet played so far um artistically character models all that they're very good they're not amazing the animation is very stifled now it's nowhere near as good as things like ac unity um, but that's because it's far more of an RPG now. So they're using dynamic vertex movement on mouths and all that lip syncing. They don't use actual motion capture anymore. They don't hand animate the frames uh, of your face when they're talking, the characters are talking, because there's just too much variety. So that gives you a very, um, as, as I call it, Thunderbirds look, as I call it back with Deus Ex, Thunderbirds look in animation. But it works, it looks great, and you don't really spend, spend that much time on it. It uses lots of inverse kinematics, lots of physics generation. There's loads of destruction in here. There's the tessellation on the ground is really good on the snow. Um, it, it seems a bit dodgy on the PS5. It seems to over tessellate um, as you move. And it's obviously frustrum based. When you spin the camera around, the floor seems to wobble and jitter around. Last time I saw this was on uh, Anthem, where that kind of had this warpy floor. Uh, it looks more obvious on the PS5. It does it slightly on the Series X, but it doesn't seem as bad. Uh, but generally, it's all very good. So we've got a game that's... Uh, resolution's the same. Performance is almost the same. It's almost identical. There's hardly anything in it. In fact, if I wasn't comparing this, I'd say they're identical. It's just slightly to the advantage of the X Series X in terms of GPU, so 33 to 60 milliseconds every now and then in cutscenes, but it's incredibly minor. So uh, within a percent or two, it's, it's nothing to write home about. And as expected at this early point, very, very close indeed. So what we're left with, what we're left with the biggest difference between them, those loading times, what are they like? Well, hold on to your hats, people, because this is where your head could be completely blown off. I hope you're sitting down. There is a whopping difference between these two consoles. That's right. Upwards of 12% at its highest point. 12% difference between loading a continue to the same point in the game here on both versions. Remember these games, all PS5 and Series X games and Series S, need to run on the ssd you cannot run them on external drives so this is as good as they get 12 percent difference and if you die and then respawn back to the same point where you are that drops down to five percent so there you go there is not a lot in it this next generation war has kicked off but is it as exciting as you wanted it to be I'm sure there will be lots of discussions about this title but this is just the tip of the iceberg it's the first game I've managed to cover. There is much, much more to cover. And it's early days. Please remember that as good and as sharp and as crisp as this game is, it is a cross-generation title. It runs on the older versions at 30 FPS and it doesn't look significantly different. They've not changed anything drastic here. 
The biggest improvement is that 60 FPS rate. It's got better tessellation. It's got a longer draw distance. And that, I love the fact they brought the clouds back. So just like Odyssey, they brought back that dynamic lighting and the, the volumetric cloud system. And here, they are definitely improved over the uh, lower base consoles. But there is much more that I can discuss, but that's not for the here and now. Hopefully, you enjoyed this. We come to the end of another analysis. Frame rates and loading time so fast, you don't even need to speed it up. Hopefully, you enjoyed this. And if you did or anything else I've put together, please like, subscribe and share because it really helps the channel and improves my quality. And I will see you all very soon on some next generation action. I'll catch you on the next one.